you are watching the fan club. You're watching the fan club. And you're watching the fan club. Do you know what time it is? And you know what time it is. It's time for the fan club. Let's go. Hey! I can't do this on my own. Cause you know things ain't always sweet. When you out here in these streets. But my morpher when it morph, I made a fake one. All right, without any further ado, I'm so happy. Let's bring out Casper and Grace Van Dien. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so I'm so excited, uh, Casper. We got to work together in Lakeland yes. earlier this year, uh, and uh, you decided to bring somebody with you this time. <laughs> I'm always cooler when I have her with me. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think you're, I think you're, I mean. I'm much cooler with her. Much cooler, okay. <laughs> Casper, I mean, you are, you are the epitome of cool, I believe. Oh. I mean, what do you guys think? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Very good. Very good. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and, and I'm super excited. This is, my, this is the first time I've had a uh, father-daughter combo hey. up on stage hey. with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I wanna ask a, a little bit about that and. Uh, Grace, when did you realize that you wanted to get in get into the industry? Uh, did you feel any pressure to follow oh the footsteps? No. No. Um, he didn't want me to get into acting. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I remember coming home from school and being like, I think I'll take like a year off, and he was like, No. And he sat me down and he stood behind me and made sure I applied to colleges. And then when he went away, I pulled all my applications. <laughs> did you, Sorry. Are you just finding out about this right now? No, I mean, I, I always wanted my kids to do whatever they, they wanted to do. Right. But, uh, I, I, you know, I, I got held back in first grade because I couldn't read. So I was very, it was very important to me that my children learn how to read. And Gracie's one of the best readers. I, I, some I had to, I became a really good reader, but I, I wasn't when I was young. Because I'm, I found out later I'm dyslexic. So in doing that, I, um, I always wanted to encourage them to, to study and, and, and do well. But I'm, I mean, when when I got a chance to direct my first movie, um, I wanted her to be the lead. She was That's true. She's 17, so at that time she was the, the lead. She'd been in small things. I didn't want her to do something um, where I couldn't protect her right away at right. first when she was young. So if, if I had a part where she could be a, an extra or do a one line and something, in a couple movies she, she was that there. And then, then when I was able to direct this movie, I thought, oh, she'd be the perfect Sleeping Beauty. So, that's that's and awesome. She was, and she really was. Now, I wanna, you, you mentioned being dyslexic. Did you have, did you find that was an issue when you were starting out in the industry that, you know, uh, you know maybe you, know, you had to work a little bit harder on, on reading the scripts? What? The blue sky story. The blue sky story? I don't remember the blue sky story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would tell me this story about how he went into an audition and he, <laughs> he uh, did the first scene and the casting director was like, oh my gosh, yes, Casper, that's exactly what I've been looking for. Like, you did it perfectly. Like, perfect, amazing. Like, I already know you're it. Let's just move on to the second scene so we can send this off to the, to the producers. And they do the second scene and the very last line he goes, the blue is sky. And he goes, oh, fuck, sorry, let's just do it again. And she's like, okay, that's totally fine, Casper, let's just do it again. And he gets to the end, he goes, the blue is sky. And she's like, that's okay. Uh, let's just try one more time. And he goes, the blue is sky again. And she's like, all right. <laughs> so yes, it has affected his career. Yeah, I went from, from her, her describing, oh, this is exactly, I've been waiting for somebody to come do it this way, to me screwing the whole pooch on that one. <laughs> and uh, not getting the job. Because I was, uh, I just was, my brain, uh, and it's been since I was young. What I do is I switch the middle words and the middle letters. So sometimes I'll have a very dramatic pause in, in acting, and somebody, <laughs> somebody will go, "My God, what were you thinking?" And I was like, well, "I was just trying to figure out what the words were like in my head." <laughs> a, but I guess it's a thoughtful look, or or also sometimes people say it's resting murder face. <laughs> 
All right. I didn't know I had that, but apparently. You definitely know you have resting murder face. <laughs> I don't mean to. All my friends growing up, they were like, yeah, your parents are scary, so do you want to come over to mine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I guess that could, that could work, you know, in your, uh, in, in your benefit as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boyfriends, after meeting him, were gone. <laughs> <laughs> but in, 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 in my defense, like, she was working at this, uh, this, this shop once, and she was like, can you come in? She asked me to come in, and I go, so which one of you is the one that's taking my daughter to the prom? And the guys all go like this, and they point to the one guy, and I'm like... Just remember, whatever you do to my daughter, I'm going to do to you. <laughs> <laughs> After prom, he, he, I, I went up to him and I was like, Dad, so it looks like you're going to have to dip me and scoop dip me him. and slow dance. Dip him. Dip, uh, dip him. Oh, yeah, dip him and slow dance with him. <laughs> yeah. I looked at him and he's like... <laughs> I asked him. I didn't have a date, so I just asked my friend that I worked with. Yeah, but she want, yeah, She liked. She liked when I come in. She she always liked when I came in and threaten people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So when did you realize that the uh, acting industry, the, the entertainment industry, was something that you wanted to do? Uh, when I worked with my dad, I always wanted to go into. Um, psychology and be like a therapist that specializes in specific patients um, or I wanted to be a writer because I found that would be therapeutic for me and then when he cast me I was like oh no this is very therapeutic <laughs> because I get to completely let go of my whole backstory and take on whatever this character's life was and that was nice. She was the best thing in the movie. Thanks dad. <laughs> Uh, so, so what type of writing? Like a book, novel, a movie? Novels. novels. I liked writing novels. I would have been a terrible writer professionally though, because I never finished any of my books. <laughs> <laughs> She's um, very always been very creative. And um, when when I when I was when she was young, she'd be on set. You know, yes, you see, you see children running around and doing things. But I'd always look over, and Gracie would be over there. She always had a book with her or something. But she'd be looking, observing everything, and, and that's plotting. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm an observer of people. It's just what, what I think it's an actor thing. It's right. like people that, that you know you're studying different people. We also found out a little bit later that I'm pretty blind, so yeah. I was probably just trying to figure out what was going on around. <laughs> yeah. uh, Casper, uh, did you uh, when you were? I don't want to say the year because it's going to bruise a lot of egos in here. But when you were filming uh, Starship Troopers, did you uh, realize? At that point, that it might have some longevity, or was that just a, a job and you were going to move on to the next job? Because uh, any Starship Troopers fans in here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, when, when Starship Troopers, well, we were, when I got that, and uh, I was a huge Verhoeven fan beforehand, but uh, my greatest day on set. One of the, well, I have many great days on set, but one of them was we had 1,400 extras running. It's when the drop ships are coming, all these explosions are going off. We had 1,400 extras, 30 stuntmen, 30 actors, all with live weapons, not the, not the, not the extras, but uh, the, the stuntmen and the, uh, and the actors were all running around shooting, doing all this. And I looked over, and behind the camera, I saw Paul Verhoeven, the director of Robocop, Ed Neumeyer, the writer of Robocop, John Davison, the producer of Robocop, and Phil Tippett, the visual effects genius behind Robocop. And I looked over there and I went, well, wait a minute. I'm number one on my call sheet here. And Peter Weller was number one on his call sheet, so I'm Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Reference for some of you that don't know, that was a great Verhoeven movie, Robocop. So, um, but uh, that just became something that was overwhelming to, to, to know that I was in something. I thought Starship Troopers would be much huger than it was at the time. It unfortunately went over a lot of people's heads, but right. but a lot of people revisited it, and this today's audience, this young audience, is much more that their parents, the, a lot of them are, are cool and have really um, got it into them, and, and so now they, they, there's a, a better understanding of it. And unfortunately, the political commentary in it is still extremely prevalent today. Um, How many months were you filming that? Uh, six and a half months straight. So during those six and a half months, months total. what was the best day of your life? Best day of my life was October. During those six and a half months. 
October 15th, 1996. Why? What happened on that day, Dad? <laughs> the day before I was in the water tank getting my leg worked on, and they let me out the next day, the only day I had off in the entire production, and uh, Grace was born. <laughs> I felt like I was in utero with her, you know, because I was in that, you know, in that water tank for a little bit. And the next day I was back in on the tank and, and Harrison Ford walked on the set. <laughs> because Vic Armstrong was our second unit director and he was directing that day, so I get to meet Grace and Harrison Ford in the same week. <laughs> Definitely this was the coolest part. <laughs> I knew that was coming, so I quickly looked at you. I knew who it was. I mean, Harrison's cool, but nobody's cooler than Grace. So. And uh, very recently, uh, people have been reaching out to you uh, as a little video game. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hell Divers 2 uh, makes some references, and uh, a lot of folks have approached you about maybe wanting to uh, do something with that franchise? Well, you know, it's very interesting. I mean, I, I love all the tributes to Starship Troopers and I love anything that uh, pushes it towards it. I've also seen another game and I just got to see some of the, uh, the footage of it called Starship Troopers Extermination. Yes! I'm allowed to say that I saw it. Um, yeah, I'm allowed to say that. Uh, and I'm very excited to see more of that. So we'll see that, you know, they're coming out I, hopefully soon. And so, but I love all these tributes to Starship. I, I would love to go back and make a TV series about it. So that would be a cool thing. I almost had it done with Robert Rodriguez. But I'm Johnny Rico. Yeah, Jen, Gracie wants to be Johnny Rico. <laughs> <laughs> be cool. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. I think it would be really cool. Little Johnny Rico. Juanita. Rico. Juanita. <laughs> yeah, very good. Jonathan. 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 <laughs> uh, and, and Grace, uh, were you a fan of Stranger Things? Oh, before yeah. you were cast? Oh, yeah. Yeah? So when you were, uh, did, did you know, because there's sometimes, you know, projects, uh, big projects are, are often, you know, kept under wraps when you are auditioning. Did you realize that was what you were auditioning for? And being a fan of it, did that make any, did that add any extra stress to it? Yeah, I knew it was what I was auditioning for, but um, I just immediately was under the impression where I was like, I'm not kidding this. I was like, there's no way. Um, that'd be too cool. So I, I put myself on tape in my apartment and I sent it off and then I went and watched a movie and on the drive home I was like, I need to redo that, I did so bad. And then I was like, I'm not gonna get it anyway, why does it matter, I'm not gonna redo it. So, but then yeah, I didn't, that, yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I was so proud of her. Yeah. Did you realize while you were filming and especially the scene, you know, for, no spoilers for those who may not have seen it. Uh, did you realize that uh, that line here uh, was going to be so iconic that uh, people would be yelling it to you probably no. for the rest of your life? <laughs> no. No, um, no, Joe and I did not uh, realize at all that that him yelling at my floating body would turn into a TikTok. <laughs> uh, no. Does it see like, uh, it, I mean, there's been um, action figures, uh, Funko Pop, I mean, all these things, uh, and, you know, for, for both of you, you know, collectibles, did you, do you have any of that stuff at home anywhere? Do you have a, a collection of like a, I don't want to say like a, a mural or anything, or a, you know, a, a, you know, a collector shrine. That's the word. Thank you. Listen, it's it's still morning. A shrine, uh, you know, uh, to some of the works that you guys have done. No, my Funko Pop is out in September, so I don't have it yet. Um, but I've seen some like H like and M did a hoodie with my face on it, which is so fucking weird. <laughs> it's so weird to see that. Um, I gotta get that. <laughs> I, I don't have any of these things. I, I, I have a, a I Chrissy have. altar in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, I have all these uh, little uh, uh, sewn Chrissies, and I have uh, a 
Chrissy Candle. I have, someone made me a custom Chrissy Funko Pop. Yeah. So I have that, but her arm fell off and I don't know where it is. So she's just like armless. <laughs> arm. A couple Come years on. ago, uh, Universal Studios did hell, had a Stranger Things house. Last year. It was yeah. it last year? Yeah. Was it last year? Did anybody go? I, it was a I did. Four nights. <laughs> Yeah. I uh, went and yeah. there was a Chrissy at the at the end of the yes. thing and I thought she was fake. So I was like <sighs> taking selfies with her and she was not fake. She jumped out at me and screamed and I it was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> My friend has a picture of me like <laughs> <laughs> So you scared yourself. <laughs> She was a little too short to actually be me, which is like a flex, because I'm pretty short. Yeah, I was sad. very proud to be taller than her. Did you do a picture with her? I, I just said I had pictures. Oh, oh, no, like an official picture? Yeah. No. Oh, you should have. That was she couldn't change her face. She was wearing a mask where it was like permanently like jaw down to here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, normally with these things, we have a we usually have a, a microphone in in these rooms for questions, but I feel like this room the acoustics are good, everything uh, it's uh, intimate setting. So if you do have questions, raise your hand and uh, we'll get to. Uh, so we'll you I saw your hand first. Uh, what's your name? I'm Caleb. Hi Caleb. Hi Caleb. Hi. Starship Hello. Troopers three. Yes, this yes. is Colonel Rico in Starship Troopers three. General Rico. General Rico in uh, Starship Troopers four. Yeah. How did you lose your eye between these movies? Yeah, it's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always bug me. I don't know. Man. <laughs> I have to get to the bottom of that. I have to. Oh, <laughs> the eye, the dead joke. We went so long without a dead joke. <laughs> how, no, off, how, how often does he throw that joke, that joke out? Oh, I stream on Twitch, and every every other stream that I do, people are like, "Time to call Casper," and they want me to call him just so that we can get a run of dad jokes going. <laughs> Don't tell your dad. They love it. It's, it's nonstop with this one. So your hand. Uh, great. So I wanted to ask you about Stranger Things. So you and Joe had limited screen time, but you, your guys' chemistry was so perfect. Was that something you guys practiced off screen? Was that a lot of improv during the process? Um, yeah, I mean, him and Mason, who played Jason, uh, they, I, they were the first people I met. So I went over to Joe's for dinner. He made us dinner, and then we just became like best buds while I was there. So we hung out a bunch of times. We went to, Joe and I went to like the gardens in Atlanta, um, and we went to the aquarium with Mason, and like we, we did like a bunch of activities outside of filming. Uh, so when it came time to do the scene, that was like my last day on set um, in the forest scene. So that was like after six months of friendship. <laughs> so everything was very organic. Um, and his whenever he plays Eddie, he's a little bit more uh, clumsy, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so all of that was just, it was fun to laugh at him. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Hey, right there. We go you, and then I'm going to go. How did it feel when you first did the film of Stranger Things? When, oh, like on my first day? Yeah, first day. Um, my first day was the bathroom scene where I'm with Sadie Sink. And she was just so cool, and, and the Duffer Brothers were so cool, but they were all so, so welcoming. Like, there was no ego, which was really interesting to see, because I'd expect some ego, it would be deserved. Um, but there wasn't, and so it was just really cool, and they, I felt very um, allowed to be artsy, so screaming. But there's the scene in the bathroom where there's Vecna's feet under the, the bathroom stall and I have to be so terrified and screaming at them. And obviously that's all CGI so they were just like, uh, who's the crew member with the ugliest shit? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's literally just some guy walks in and I just see his like muddy sneakers under the door stall and I'm like screaming and cowering in a corner. And then he has to like Walk away! <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Behind the scenes of that would be funny, but I'm glad that they're not released. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, Casper, love the shirt, by the way. 
Me yeah. too. Great yeah. tacos. <laughs> Woo! What future projects are you most excited about coming out right now? Uh, He's not allowed to talk about it. One, I'm not allowed to talk about, but I can't talk about a Western I just did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to do a, a lot of riding in that one. I, I did all my own, I, I put a poster, a, a picture up of me on this horse, this uh, paint, beautiful horse. Um, a Wilder Smith who was on uh, uh, Yellowstone, who plays young, uh, his dad's the one with the handlebar, the white guy, uh, what's his name, oh my God, Smith. It's, his dad plays, you know, the, the best friend, uh, the guy that works there. For, for, um, for it. Anyhow, he, he, <laughs> had the horse, he had the horse on this. I got to do all this. I posted a picture of me on a horse, and somebody goes, this reminds me of the Sleepy Hollow commentary where, where Tim Burton said, thank, and thank God Casper Van Dien can really ride a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I didn't even know he said that in the commentary, so it's cool. I did do all my own horse stunts in Sleepy Hollow, but I did all my own horse stunts on this one, and it's because of her great-grandfather. He gave me a horse when I was young. He said, if you want to learn how to really ride, you're going to do that. So uh, Robert Mitchum gave me a horse, and I learned, I broke that horse and learned how to ride, and I'm, I'm pretty good on a horse because of him. You know, I, I rode before, but that really teaches you to ride when, when you have to break a horse for uh, mm -hmm. that, and, uh, and she was an amazing horse. And, and then I got to ride this paint, and I did the most riding I've ever did, and Wilder and I were just going in and out, galloping up and down. And he's amazing on a horse. I mean, I wouldn't even pretend to be like him, but... But uh, he would just show me something and go, just do it like this. And I come in and he goes, good, good following direction. Direction. I'm an actor. <laughs> a job. So I could do that one. It's called Guns of Redemption. And I'm excited. It's got Sean Astin in it. He was also in Stranger Things. Bob. And, oh, yeah, uh, and Jeff Fahey, who uh, was in Silverado and is in Horizon coming out. And Lawnmower Man, I mean, he's in everything. I've done seven movies with him. Danny and I did a movie with him together. We had a scene together. It was a lot of fun. In the back, I saw your, yes. dark. Uh, to be fair, the Duffer Brothers told me that it was going to be the most um, dark and horrific death in all of Stranger Things. So I, I expected that. I just, I don't know, it was my first time dying. So <laughs> I'm glad it was kind of epic. Yeah, I was so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> he died well. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow, I got cut in half, so you know, I'm like, yeah. you know, we can compare these death scenes. You know? yeah. Yours is much cooler. <laughs> so mine might be one of the coolest deaths. It is, but I mean, mine, I got cut in half by Darth Maul, though. <laughs> Ray Park, he, and he had just showed me Darth Maul, so I, it wasn't, but, but your scene was cooler. I mean, everything you did, every crunch and everything, I was like, uh, everyone's like, oh my God, was that hard for you to see? And I go, no, I'm so proud of my daughter. <laughs> one person asked me, because I guess they didn't, I don't know. They asked me if uh, they specifically sought out a um, contortionist to play Chrissy. And I was like, you think I'm a what now? <laughs> I don't even do yoga. <laughs> I don't know if I can touch my toes anymore. <laughs> That's touch. Hi. I'm sorry for my voice breaking and all that, um, but... I want to know, like, what was your thoughts on, like, Chrissy's, like, mental health breaking down throughout, like, the bathroom scene and so on and so forth? Um, I, I tend to find characters that I, like, I tend to get cast as characters that I relate to very well. So I guess you wouldn't even call me an actor. I'm, because I'm not ever acting. It's all very much true to me. Um, so all of her mental health and, like, the the struggles she had and her issues with her mom like it was very parallel to my life so there wasn't much acting necessary it was kind of like i said earlier acting is very therapeutic for me um but i'm on antidepressants now so we'll see maybe yeah. i can play yeah, happy yeah. people now <laughs> yeah yeah depressants <laughs> doesn't have 
eyes or bones anymore. <laughs> She's just a bunch of flesh. She'd be like a little blobfish on the ground. <laughs> you would love to play a blobfish. <laughs> I would love to play a blobfish. Just honestly. Honestly, she would. <laughs> no, but if I could go back to Chrissy and she's not a pretzel, um, I would, like, Eddie would have to come back too. And it would have to be, like, I'd love to see them play out because they're, like, Joe and I played their scene with a lot of flirtation and tension, so it would be cool to see that blossom more. I was wondering if the first Starship Troopers, uh, what was it like to work with Michael Ironside? Woo! Well, I've worked with him too. Yeah, she's worked with him as well. So awesome. I'm, I still hear his voice in my head <laughs> <laughs> to this day. I mean, he was a mentor for my character in the script, but he was a mentor in real life for me. So he's somebody that I um, I really admire and look up to, and uh, and I do hear his voice often. And he would give me little tricks of the trade, and uh, and he's uh, yeah, he's just somebody that I still hear his voice. I remember when I worked with him. Um, he, they were like, oh, Michael, this is Grace. And he was already walking away from me. And he was like, oh, yeah? Hi, nice to meet you. And I was like, Michael, you, uh, you worked with my dad. And he was like, oh, yeah, who's your dad, kid? Still not facing me, not turning around. I think he was expecting me to say, like, some random person he would have forgotten at this point because he's worked so many years. And I was like, uh, Casper Van Dien? And he immediately was like, your dad's Casper Van Dien. <laughs> and then the rest of the shoot, he was just so lovely to especially me. <laughs> and wouldn't stop complimenting me and sent me this long email just being like, you have it, kid. <laughs> and like immediately turned into my mentor. So I'm like, okay. My dad's a good guy then. <laughs> Every time I mention my dad to anyone who's worked with him, they're immediately so nice to me. Well, so either your threats work, <laughs> or you're the kindest person ever. Um, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I do get every single, I watch every single person that I've, that I've worked with and that I know over the years, and they meet Gracie, and uh, they all fall in love with her right away. So it's always beautiful to see. And, and, and this business is, you know, there's there's a lot of good people in it. There's a lot of, you know, there's weird people and different people, but there's a lot of good people. <laughs> and uh, um, and it's always fun to see, but it's, it's also really, as a father, it's really rewarding to see how much they take to her. I mean, Danny, Danny loves her, and, you know, all these guys will come up, I love your daughter, I love your daughter. And I'm like, I know, thank you, man, thank you, she's the best. <laughs> but then they come up to me, and they're like, like, Daddy, he's always up, coming up to me going, when am I working with your dad again? <laughs> But it's got to make both of you feel good, you know, that... Uh, I'm happy he's not an asshole. Right. <laughs> I'm less of an asshole because she's so kind. Her and my, my wife, Jenny, they're both two of the kindest people I've ever seen. I watch her with her fans, and I watch her at these cons, and how generous she is, and, and how kind, and I couldn't be more proud as a father. I mean, if there's that, that's the most accomplishment I think I could ever say. You can have all the career and everything like that, but when you have somebody that is... Uh, that has that superpower of kindness. That's you know we need more of that. So I want to uh, talk about that real quick, and, and that is you do get to work these shows, these conventions with each other. How how cool is it? You know, looking over and seeing your dad there, and oh, you know, it's the best. I love it so much. And whenever anyone gives me a Chrissy gift, he immediately runs over and takes it and puts it on his table. <laughs> <laughs> I took a I took a picture today with the uh, the uh, cutout uh, version of you. Somebody brought a cutout version of you. Yeah. Car cardboard standing tall thing. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I I love it. I, I for me it's it's awesome because I look over and I uh, it makes it even more fun for me. Uh, and you know I don't I know I did something right if she turned out to be this perfect. So. Aww. <laughs> So funny looking. Where'd you get your funny looks from? Because I know it wasn't me. <laughs> well, I also I used to, but I used to go do the do the smigo. <laughs> do a smigo. But I also did. I also go. I would also go. Um, uh, do the Powerpuff Girl. I go. Wait a minute. I go. What color hair does Bubbles have? 
And she goes, Lello. I go, what color hair do you have? She goes, Lello. What color eyes what what color eyes does bubbles have? She goes, blue. And I go, what color eyes do you have? Blue. And I go, and who's the baby sister? She goes, bubbles, and who's the baby sister and everything? She goes, me. Mommy touchy bubbles! <laughs> I scream. Ah! And she laughed and go like so. So it was great. No, my favorite memory growing up with you is if I was sobbing, oh, yeah, like outright bad. sobbing, I was a very amenable child. If I'd be <laughs> just so upset about something and he'd go, Gracie, happy face, Gracie, yeah, she... happy face, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, whatever you want, I guess. You'd start laughing so hard. <laughs> 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 you have a question, you've had your hand up for about an hour. So. <laughs> Oh, I, I would love to be in Marvels. One of the greatest uh, thrills of my life is uh, Stan Lee pitched me a series once. And I had the same agent as him, they, but they wanted me to go with somebody else. But I was like, no, I'm going with him. And when I met him, he was like, I got this, uh, he goes, I got an idea. He goes, what's your, Casper, that's an interesting name. I go, yeah, we all have different middle names. He goes, well, what's your dad's name? I go, same as mine. He goes, well, what's your grandfather? I go, Anson, Casper Anson. What's your great grandfather? Anson, uh, Casper Force, and he goes, okay, so you're gonna be Anson Force. That's how he start. And I'm like, I'm looking at this, this is in 2000, I'm looking at Stan Lee going, oh my God. <laughs> and after we had the meeting, he goes, hey, you know, if they ever make a Captain America, you'd be perfect as Cap. And I went, oh my God. <laughs> I could be Chris Evans, he did amazing, so I'm not trying to say anything like that, but it was one of the hugest compliments I ever got in my career was having Stan Lee say that to me. Uh, before you know, before all the the Marvel things were happening, so um, I loved him, and I would have loved to have done that. But I, you, you know, would have I, been a cooler Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sweet. I, I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> that was before Cam when you got. Say that again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it again. So I don't know. I, I did get to play Tarzan. So he was a he was a superhero. He, I'm the 20th Tarzan. So he was the first. He's the OG. He's before Superman, right. Wonder Woman, Batman. You know, everybody can say all these super. They're the first superhero. I'm like, Tarzan was written in 1912. The first Tarzan movie is 1918. I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna go out on a limb there. But also, you know, I mean, that's Edgar Rice Burroughs. I'm I'm a huge fan of his writing and stuff like that. So, uh, and my my dad's idol. My dad's my idol. His idol as a, as a as a kid was Johnny Weissmuller and Tarzan and all the Tarzan books. So when I get to play my dad's my idol's idol was one of the biggest thrills of my life, too. Who's your idol? Yeah. It was my, my dad. Well, I can't play him. <laughs> <laughs> sure you can. He was a Navy pilot. You could be a Navy pilot. I knew what your hand raised. Stranger Things, I took the 86 necklace and her bracelet. I wish I would have taken her whole outfit. They had a whole cheer team worth of them, so I could have, but I'm so scared to do that kind of stuff. Um, but I wish I did. But I don't know, I've got a lot of friends on the set, so I've kind of put a little, like, hey, can you please, if you just, if you happen to run into it, <laughs> snag me one. I don't, I don't have anything. Um, I, I I was given a couple of things, but I gave them to some charity things way back when. So I, I don't have anything. I have my Starship Troopers chair. It's kind of dilapidated, but my director's chair, it's all worn out and fun. I remember when I was 11 or so, I had to do a book report for um, a class, and it was either do a puppet show or make a mini movie. Yeah. And so I read Starship Troopers, <laughs> and I decided to make a mini movie. <laughs> I, uh, all the other kids probably fucking hated me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Dad went and asked the guy who holds all the storage for the, the costumes and production design if we could borrow some of the things. So I got to wear the Johnny Rico helmet in my in my mini movie for <laughs> class. She was so cute. She called it Starship Troopers 4 and she had uh, 
one of my cam one of my best friends who's a director and camera operator he came and operated with his two daughters and she had he had she had them in there one of those is now a director and uh, he also directed her movie later. And I had another one of your special effects friends come yeah. and we superimposed one of his action figure bugs from the movie and we superimposed it to make it look like it was attacking forced us. Forced perspective. Yeah, forced perspective. And it she blew up. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, uh, and, and then another help, another one of my friends helped her edit it. And they all, and she was like, but she was the boss. You died. She was, yeah, I, she goes, she, I'll go, oh yeah, I'll come in and play Johnny Rico. She goes, no, I'm Johnny Rico. You're just a trooper. <laughs> Name. I think I was like Sam or something like that. I don't remember. You were in the book. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you made it, it to the official movie. In the back? Yes. Um, sorry. You don't have to be sorry. <laughs> Why well, you gotta say it like that? <laughs> you could be happy like this. <laughs> Um, working with Joe and Mason and all of them and the cheerleaders. They taught me how to do the whole cheer in like an hour. Um, I didn't, the Duffer Brothers were like, you don't have to learn how to do the cheer. You can just stand off to the side and like be like the captain that's really proud of them. And I was like, okay. But then we had so much extra time before filming that I was just like, oh, we're bored. Just teach me the dance for fun. And they did, and then uh, the Duffer Brothers were like, Grace, we're so sorry. Do you think you could do, like, like learn it really quick, learn, like, a, just a piece of it? And I was like, I know the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was like working with all the people that um, were there for just one day or there for the entire time. That was my favorite part. They were really cool. Another question. Um, if you could, in, like, any production you were in, to be a different character, who would you be? <laughs> In any production you're asking her? Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, uh, both of us both. or just me? Yeah, both. I want to be Vecna. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't outdo Jamie, so maybe I'd want to be like baby Vecna, like his little friend that also looks like him. <laughs> I want to be Chrissy's dad. Yeah, he said to me, Chrissy's dad, and I was like, he doesn't have any lines, and he was like, perfect. <laughs> perfect. He's lipstick anyway. <laughs> and then she goes, but they already cast somebody, and I go, well, I don't want him to get fired. Yeah. <laughs> you want to answer that? Um, I was five, I think? Five or six? Um... When I saw, I saw like Starship Troopers and Sleepy Hollow, like I saw like a whole stream of the movies. In one night. Loved Sleepy Hollow. Loved it, so good. Um, no, I think my, the rest, I have five siblings and the rest of them give him more shit for being naked on screen than I do. <laughs> I think mainly because, you know, I'm an actor and I haven't done it yet. I, pretty, I have like a no nudity clause, but you never know when that could change for the right director, right script. So I, I can't give him shit so that he can't give me shit. <laughs> for future Grace's decisions. <laughs> I, uh... Uh, they tricked the, the, the person looking after them, and she, I said, you, you what? You let him watch Starship Troopers and Sleepy Hollow? I mean, she's, you know, whatever she was, five or six or seven, or whatever the heck she was, and they were just a little bit older than her, the, the older ones. I said, uh, and they're like, well, your son ran out, but she stayed in and watched everything. I'm like, I'm like, why'd you... Why'd you let them watch my movies? She goes, well, you're a nice man. I figured you'd make nice movies. And, <laughs> and my older sister, she told her, she was like, oh, yeah, he's our dad. He lets us watch his movies. Like, it's fine. We see these all the time. We hadn't seen any of them. <laughs> they were tricksters. Well, that is going to be our time. On that note, that is going to be our time. Any last words? Uh, I, I actually I do have uh, some last words, and, and uh, it's being up here. It's been amazing because uh, Grace, while you've been talking, it has been uh, amazing to see your dad's pride in you. I can visibly see it. I can Don't physically stop, please. I can <laughs> no, see it. we've done so many panels together, and he cries at every single one. I have I was... not cried today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> please stop. <laughs> <laughs> 
and make you cry, and then it's all on him. <laughs> I don't want it. So, any last words for our, our fans here in Des Moines who came out to, to see you? Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Yay. One more time, please give it up for Casper and Grace. <laughs> We're leaving at 3.30, so, uh, 2.30 or 3.30? 3.30. 3.30. Yeah. So, if you want to come to our table, That's we're there for a little bit longer. I just want to give a special shout out to the Gold Ranger members out there. The Arctic Operator, Roderick Ham, Papillon Purple, Salima Ramirez, Danny Nascimento, Stephen Heffelman, Chaos Draco, Thomas Franco, Anime King Nick, Louis Cairns, Miguel Ortiz, and Sean Schiffer. Thank you guys so much for your support. And if you want a video shout out like this one, sign up to be a Gold Ranger member today. I just want to shout out all of the fans out there for taking the time out of their day to watch this content. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you can, please like, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and hit that share button. And if you guys want to be a member, click that join button right now. We have a Blue Ranger membership that gets you into the exclusive fan chat discord then we have the gold ranger membership it gets you into the fan chat but you also get a video shout out at the end of every video i want to thank you guys again if you can sign up to be a member we will see you next time peace hi hi we're bulk and skull we, we have are been requested, requested by, by the, the fan club, club to say, say something funny. funny.